is CBS 11 News Now. And hello once again to everyone on this Tuesday joining us for this uh, Facebook Live. This is News Now, our digital update. I'm Ken Molestine, and we are coming to you live right now from our Fort Worth studios. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stories that we're working on for you here on uh, at CBS 11. And of course, as always, we encourage you to chime in in the conversation. Let us know what you think. Ask any questions and participate in this so that uh, we can uh, chat with you back and forth. Uh, there is a little bit of breaking news that we're keeping an eye on uh, that we should tell you about. Uh, this was a scene just a little bit ago from Chopper 11 over an apartment fire out in Louisville. It's over at the Somerset Apartments on the 200 block of Corporate Drive. Uh, you can see the top of the, uh, the building there, the apartment uh, just completely uh, charred out, burned through. Not exactly sure of the extent of the damage, uh, but we do know that uh, right now there have not been any reported injuries at this time. Uh, of course, we're continuing uh, to keep uh, an, an eye on this, and uh, we're going to uh, bring you up to speed just as soon as we have any new details. Something else happening right now, uh, just past noon, coming out of Arlington. Let's take that shot if we could here. Uh, looks like uh, there is some sort of a gas fire happening uh, near AT&T Stadium in Arlington. You can see that right now. Chopper 11 over the scene. Looks like construction crews may have hit a line, uh, a gas line that is actively uh, spewing uh, down there. Again, uh, this is happening near AT&T Stadium, uh, and we just heard about this just a couple of uh, minutes ago. Uh, so crews are down there uh, below. As you can see, uh, they've got several uh, water streams trying to get to this uh, fire. But as is typical uh, in a gas line rupture with a fire like this, uh, as long as there is a source, as long as that gas is still uh, pumping through those uh, pipes down there, that fire is going to still continue to spew how you see it there right now. So obviously the, uh, the goal right here would be to shut off that gas. Uh, no reports of any injuries right now, uh, but if you know the area, you're going to want to stay clear of it right now. Crews there on the scene trying to get a handle of that. And of course, uh, that another uh, fire that we are keeping a very close eye on today. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about the flu. Uh, a lot has been said about this, a lot going on right now, uh, especially when it comes to Tamiflu. Tamiflu, of course, is a very popular uh, medicine that is uh, uh, prescribed to people uh, with the flu. Uh, and there is a perception that there might be a shortage of Tamiflu uh, here in the uh, Metroplex area. Let's get to Steve Pickett. He's working on the story for us today. Uh, Steve, I'm very careful to say that there is a shortage because, uh, as you mentioned, you know, it's more of a perception that there's a shortage in most cases, right? Yeah, we talked to the experts, those people right here at Doherty's Pharmacy, who are pretty busy uh, filling those prescriptions here in North Dallas. If you're familiar with this location, this is at Royal and uh, uh, Preston. Uh, very busy, very traditional. Uh, 20 to 30 of these uh, prescriptions being filled every single day. There is no shortage, they tell us. There is a demand, absolutely, a very growing demand for this uh, Tamiflu because uh, primarily it's to deal with those who've already obviously been, uh, who've contracted this illness. It, it can help deal with it. Also giving it to family members uh, to ensure that they may not get it. Uh, but nonetheless, they, they tell us that yes, uh, their demand is high, but there is essentially no shortage. What you may be seeing is going to your local pharmacy, the, some of the big box ones, the CVSs, the Walgreens, and finding out they don't have it. It's on back, uh, back order. Uh, that absolutely could be happening. And in fact, we talked uh, with a representative who sent us an email from CVS saying essentially that there's no shortage. They're just trying to make sure they get stuff yeah. into those stores on time because obviously they've got a lot of scripts. Hey, yeah, uh, last before I let you go here, Steve, uh, we're talking Tamiflu. Obviously, that's the brand name, but is it the same situation for the generic brand? Is that uh, also high demand for that as well for both? Uh, here at this particular location, we were looking at the generic brand, and uh, the name escapes me. It starts with an O, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we saw it here, uh, and essentially the same thing that, uh, yes, it is here, it is available, and folks want it, and obviously families need it. Uh, but you indeed may get to your neighborhood local uh, pharmacy and find out it's not available because they're out of stock. Out of yeah. stock is different than saying there is a complete shortage that the, the medication is not available. Certainly something that a lot of people are uh, hoping to get their hands on, though, for sure. Steve, thank you so much. All right, we're going to see you a little later on. Steve's working on that story for us uh, throughout the day. Of course, he's going to have some more on that. Uh, something else that has caught the attention of a lot of you folks uh, on Facebook and across social media uh, is this. Uh, there appears to be a growing backlash this uh, afternoon against an app that some child development experts say is harmful to kids. They're urging Facebook, this is an app from Facebook, to remove its Messenger Kids app. The app allows children to send in photos, videos, and messages uh, to parents, uh, rather to approved friends, 
Uh, child development experts apparently arguing now that young children are not ready for social media accounts, and they say that it could harm their developmental skills. We are asking for your thoughts on this. What do you think about this? Is that uh, a little too early? Is that harmful for kids? Our CBS DFW Facebook page is taking the poll. Uh, we asked some of you already, and uh, right now, it uh, looks like 57% uh, of you say uh, 18 and up is the proper age for it, 39% saying between 14 to 17. Majority of our voters, again, uh, saying at least 18. So uh, join in on this. Let us know what you think. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, an active poll going on. And, of course, we're talking to you here on Facebook Live. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what you think about this. So Emily Sparks is here. Hi. How yeah. are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Sorry to cut you off. You were going to no, say something. No, yeah. I was wondering, do you have to have these kids to have Facebook Messenger? Do you have to have a profile created? Or yeah, can you have just... The entity of Messenger. Yeah, I, th I think you have to have some kind of a profile, at least for, okay. so that your parents could control uh, what's going on there. But uh, I don't have it myself, so I'd be lying to you if I told you I was 100% sure. <laughs> you don't have the that That's messenger? exactly, I do not. You know, uh, we're waiting on it. Fa Facebook and social media became popular, thankfully, when I was an adult, so I didn't have to uh, <laughs> take care of any of that stuff. But uh, hey, uh, by the way, we're going to get to your questions and comments in a second. Uh, just go ahead and get them in here. We're reading them over here off to a screen. Uh, off the side here, but uh, hey, let's talk a little bit about um, high winds again because yes. uh, that's kind of a, a, a concern for a lot of people. We're going to see right. some more winds. We are going to see more winds. So right now, um, they're not as high as what they're going to get. We'll see these winds late today and into the day tomorrow, really ramping up. Right now, though, certainly more wind than what we saw yesterday and even this morning. They've picked up. Winds sustain 14 miles per hour around DFW, and you can see most spots at least in the low to mid teens. So, with that in mind, uh, relative humidity is extremely low, so we keep a dry air mass in place. We will see some mild temperatures today. And then with winds picking up, that's why, yet again, we're talking about the fire danger that we do have across the region. Now, yeah. the most Critical fire danger does lie off back to the west. That does include a couple of our extreme western counties and then a fire weather watch. So what's the difference? Red flag warning, that's the highest level. That's critical danger for fire. Uh, and then an elevated risk, so slightly lower. All of that to say, really across the whole area, it's just best at this time avoid burning in general today yeah, and tomorrow. That's 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 uh you know it seems obvious but we can't right, remind people yeah. enough of this because I know that in at least some of the cases of some of these fires that was the cause of it is somebody mm -hmm. was burning outside or uh, using uh, some kind of equipment or something and got a little out of hand and of course we saw just how quickly right. uh, these fires can, can can spread. Oh yeah, for sure. So try to try to stick to those tips the next couple of days. Yes, folks, uh, yeah. heed the advice. Another thing that uh, fire crews are, are, are urging people obviously and this is another one that just seems obvious, but uh, again, don't try and put these fires out because you could actually help them spread a little bit if you don't know mm. exactly what you're doing. They're saying if you see some of the smoke, some of the fire, uh, obviously just call 911 immediately. That's that's uh, best course of action always. Right. Uh, let them know. And by the way, you know, uh, we had a story earlier today. Brittany Jeffers was working on this. Fire officials out in, uh, especially Parker County, after what they had last uh, week, Gosh. everyone is on high alert about this, and, and and they know that they have to keep extra staff on hand, so they're mm -hmm. answering these 911 calls. They're not taking it lightly, so. Uh, uh, neither, neither should you. Uh, right now, uh, again, uh, and your Facebook comments are coming in right now. We're going to get to them in a second. But before we do that, get you back out to Arlington. Uh, Chopper 11 again over the scene. If you're just joining us right now over a, a gas line rupture. Uh, Standing by here for one second, okay. Uh, again, this is a gas line rupture that we've been keeping an eye on now uh, where uh, it is actively uh, spewing some flames out there. And this, I'm being told right now, is directly in front of AT&T Stadium. I know that there was a couple of people uh, here on Facebook Live indicating that this was uh, Wesley Schaefer, for example. There is a fire at CeCe's Pizza in front of the Cowboy Stadium on Collins. Wesley, I'm not sure if this is what you're seeing, if this is what you were referring to. Or if uh, you're saying that uh, there's a separate fire over at CeCe's Pizza, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully this is what you're seeing, uh, because this right here appears to be uh, a, a gas line rupture of some kind, perhaps. But actually, when the chopper zooms in a little bit more, it looks like it's a truck. It does, that's doesn't on fire. it? Yeah. And I don't know if this is the equipment. yeah, and I don't know if this is the fuel source of a truck, of a piece of equipment in that uh, in that corner that uh, is is on fire. But hey, uh, here's a zoomed out look right now. Uh -huh. uh, so if you're familiar with the area, uh, you know exactly where this is at. This is, again, I mean, this is directly across from AT&T Stadium there. Uh, let's see here. Let's get to some more comments here, uh, folks that are joining us right now. Uh, and, and again, right now, there are no reports, just so you know, of any other uh, 
of any injuries or any other uh, damage to any structures or anything nearby. Obviously, uh, the area right there, you're not going to see any traffic right there because they've got that area shut down uh, as fire crews try and get a handle on this. But uh, just by the looks of it, whatever it is, it looks like there's an active fuel source that continues to contribute to those flames. That's kind of why you see them. Right. One second, kind of it looks like it's jumping. Yeah. Right. So right now, uh, presumably, what they're doing is uh, just trying to uh, keep the flames low by keeping the fire, uh, keeping the water on it, uh, while they try and either let the fuel source burn out, uh, or try and cut it off if it is in fact, uh, if the source is in fact some sort of a a, a pipe, uh, you know, that's or like a gas line or something like that, um, that is uh, that is spewing. But clearly, we are we're keeping a close eye on that. Uh, da -da -da, we're just going through Facebook right now, reading some of the comments that people are asking here. A lot of folks uh, talking about Tamiflu still um, and uh, the flu season. Uh, Rick Schiebel asking about a previous story that we had just a bit ago. Had the flu and over it. Any chances of getting it again this season? Uh, we're, I'm not a medical expert, Rick, so I am not going to answer that question. I don't know for sure. You know, uh, we do know that uh, this is all supposed to peak sometime soon, so that's good news. That's true. I have friends in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh -huh. so both parents, uh, yeah. four kids, they both have the flu right now. Yeah. So, and, and they're the second story I've heard where this is happening, where both parents get the flu and have m several kids to try to, yeah. to keep well. So these parents, these friends of mine, are having to wear masks, uh, trying to take every precaution, wow. can't take a care of each other hardly. Right, right, right. And then they've got four they've young got, kids, yeah. five and under, to take care of. And so, entire house full of flu. Uh, you think we've, about if it strikes yeah, two we, parents. We've got a co worker also uh, in that same predicament. Really? Uh, yeah, she was uh, posting some pictures onto Facebook about all the, uh, you know, the disinfectant she's got, the yes. Vicks going on in the house, obviously the Tamiflu and all that uh, situation. Uh, I spoke to my mom. My parents live in, uh, in Miami, in Florida, and it's a very similar situation to what you just described down really? there. Really? Uh, with people just kind of, you know, in my house, my mom, my dad, uh, and uh, my little niece, whenever she's around, she's, she's bringing, you know, uh, some, some germs as well. So uh, right. it's something that uh, is affecting a lot of people. That's top of mind for a lot of people across the country right now. But again, I, this is supposed to be peaking soon. So hopefully, uh, let's hope uh, so. you know, it, it'll, it'll all be over with soon and we can talk about something else. Uh, but anyway, I, I think that's going to do it for us right now to wrap up this uh, Facebook Live once again. And as always, we thank you so much for joining us, uh, for participating in this conversation sending in your questions, your comments, your concerns, or just saying hello. Uh, for the latest, of course, on all the news that we're following for the day, head over to our website, cbsdfw.com. But for now, uh, we will see you later. Take care.